Hi guys and welcome back. So what we're going to be quickly looking at here is some of the attributes that you can give a video. And we've already kind of given two attributes here, the width and the controls. And I just wanted to show you the kind of stuff that you can do with HTML5 video. Um, that's as simple as writing in what these uh, say. So we'll start off with this autoplay. Now what autoplay does is literally as soon as the, the video is ready it'll start playing. Um, in terms of kind of web standards this isn't something I'd advise using because if you've ever been on a website and you've got a video that automatically plays it's very annoying and one other reason for doing it and this kind of uh, links in with this preload thing here um, if you've got a user that's accessing a website from a slow connection, and as, as designers and developers, we're still sort of thinking about users that are on 56k modems, and if it's a big video, you're going to slow that user down a hell of a lot, which is why it's advised that you don't also play, nor should you preload, because if a user doesn't want to watch a video, or they can't watch a video that's uh, so big because the internet's just so slow, it's advisable that you don't use um, autoplay or preload for these reasons. Um, and autoplay is particularly annoying, again, just going back to what I said earlier, that if you've ever been on a website which autoplays uh, audio or video, it's really quite annoying and will probably put users off. And this controls is something that we've already put in. So literally this just adds controls to the video the the play button the pause button the seeker the volume controls um and this is something that i definitely would advise putting in here however you can actually make your own controls using javascript and this is something that we're going to look at in this series as well i'm not going to be necessarily making a play or a pause button but uh, we're going to be changing the height or the width of the video um but it is something that you can put in that or you can create your own using JavaScript so this is probably a good thing to put in but it's not necessary if you're looking to make your own controls the height and the width these two kind of come in together now in this uh, video here we've actually specified the width and that was to sort of lower the, the, the sort of resolution if you like of the video but when we specified the width, we didn't specify the height, and the height still changed. And the reason for this is because of the way videos work, they are proportional. It's not like an image, for example, that if you to change the width of it, it would skew. You only really need to choose one of these to change the, to the sort of height of both, and these will remain proportional, as you've really already seen. Um, so if, if I'll just sort of reiterate this if you missed it so I've, I've taken that width thing out uh, I'll save that we'll go back into the the video that we've we've started making if I refresh this it goes back to the same size uh, the original size I, I should say and if I just pop that width back in refresh it as you can see the video remains proportional uh, the point I'm trying to make here is that this is all sort of the height and the width kind of goes into itself uh, loop uh, specifies if the video will start again um, I'm kind of indifferent to this. To me, this would probably annoy me if I finish watching a video and then it plays from the start again. I, I don't really see why you would want this, but perhaps you can think of a reason that you do. Uh, the media thing here specifies if the output of the video should be muted. Well, what this says is that when the video uh, plays, it will be sort of automatically muted. And these would have to unmute it. Um, you might find a legitimate use for that, perhaps. Um, sometimes videos do load when they're muted. I can't think of a real-life purpose that you would use, but maybe you can. Um, it's not overly irritating unless people play a video and they expect that they'll hear volume straight away. It might confuse people, I, I guess, but um, again, there's probably a more legitimate use for this than I'm thinking of. Uh, poster. Now, I'm going to come back to this because we're going to be putting this in. Uh, I've already kind of spoken about preload and why I think it's a bad idea. And then we've just got the source, which is the source of the video file. Something that we have used and something that we have to use, so uh, which we've done here, uh, SRC. So I mentioned about this poster. Well, um, a poster is an image that will appear 
before the image is played. So I may as well just give you the example of this. So in this, in the root directory, we've got this images folder, and we have uh, a PNG file called uh, image.png, and it's just this PHP Academy logo. And this, in a sense, you could sort of, if, if this is a specific frame that you'd like that you want to represent the video when it's loaded, or um, you know, perhaps you want to put your company's logo on there or, or something like that, then this is why this would be a good idea. It does mean, though, of course, that you're loading the, the picture as well as the video. And if again, if we're thinking about web standards and things like that, um, that could take time to load. It is something you need to consider. But again, this is incredibly simple to do. So if you just add in as a parameter, poster equals uh, images slash image dot png. Um, and that's it. And if I refresh my HTML5 video, you can see that we get the PHP Academy uh, logo text, if you like, is there. And then when we play the video, that disappears. And the video starts playing, which is great. That's exactly what we wanted. So um, I think that will do just for sort of talking about the parameters that we can include. Um, play with them, see what you think with them, but just sort of try to bear in mind different web standards and different users that might be coming in uh, with, uh, you know, varying sort of internet speeds and things like that. So it's worth just taking a look over these different um, attributes and just sort of having a little think about them. But by all means, play with them and, and see what you think. Um, this, uh, by the way, I, I've just gotten off the W3C. Uh, it's www.w3schools.com. Uh, slash tags slash tag underscore video dot ASP. Um, you can find it quite easily on the W3C schools uh, website. So uh, what we'll be doing in the next video, I think, is adding a little bit of JavaScript. So